going to try to show you my little green stalk that's filled with herbs, all kinds of herbs. Some big petaled Cuban oregano and some sage. I've got uh, heather and um, lots of little things like thyme and oregano, regular oregano, Italian oregano. So you'll see the vines growing all over it. And I'm hopefully going to relay the fact that when the sun hits it, it shines in all different colors and there's a dark side and a light side. It's not so important that every detail shows, just the general concept that it's filled with plants and that it's got a beautiful highlighted side. I'm not really relaying beautifully here in this video, but the dark sides of this little bush here, next to the light side being hit by the sun is always so fascinating to me. And I think today I'm going to paint that. I wish you could see it the way I see it, but it's often backlit in the morning. I like the fact that some of the little leaves are being hit. That's Cuban oregano, the majority of it there, but there's all kinds of herbs in here. The leaves that are being hit on top by the sun have a white, very light green reflection. But the ones that the sun is shining through, they look more yellow, like this one here and those there. You can see the difference between, for instance, this white one right here, sorry, my fingers, and then these greener ones here, yellow green, and then the dark shadows down below. So I'm gonna try to capture that if I can. I'm gonna do the best I can. My birds are right there, so you're gonna hear them screaming. I might have to cut some of the sound out because they don't like it when I'm not playing with them. Very, very needy creatures. Never get a parrot unless you absolutely understand what you're in for, because it's a lot of work. So, how do I think I can paint this painting? Well, I'm going to start with the biggest brush that I think I can use. First, I'm going to open up my paints here that I've come up with this little system. I'm watching some of my favorite artists that use acrylics. Use. Keep it inside my Madison Stay Wet easel. I keep them moisturized. And I'm put a little moisture on my actual canvas, which is just a nice pre-tinted canvas that I like to use. Usually I use a warm tone, but today I'm using a gray tone. In the meantime, what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna mix up some blue and some nice rose matter deep and make myself a dark color. I'm going to get my eye like this and look through or use a little viewfinder and decide what exactly do I want in this painting come up with a concept. I want my bucket here and here. It goes this way and this way and this way and then finally this way. It's not that important. It just helps me to figure out approximately where I'm going to be with it. So I'm scrubbing in the dark side. Perfection doesn't really matter. The drawing I had under there doesn't really matter. It was just something to help me to have a placeholder and a concept in my mind of where I was going with the painting. Using mostly translucent colors. Now I'm just trying to get an idea of the lighter side. 
so I can kind of place where I want the leaves to be on this side. Nothing is defined yet. Playing around with the color a little bit to see what color I think represents that planter. Going in with some background, which I'll probably change a couple of times, just so I can begin to shape the planter from the outside in. So you don't always have to draw perfectly, you have to shape perfectly. So you go in and you correct your shapes. Push them together if you need to, or expand them out if it's not balanced the way you want it to be. You can see this is not drawn well, and it really doesn't matter, because by the time I'm done putting in my shapes, it should resemble a planter. So I begin to put some shapes in that look like leaves. They're still being done with a very large brush, with very little detail, but I'm just getting the feel of what this thing that I'm painting is. Again, just fill in shapes. I have very few colors on my board. If you don't count the white, I basically have six colors down, but you can make almost anything you want out of those. For instance, the Rose Matter Deep is too red to make a nice beige color. But all you have to do is add a little bit of green to it, a little bit of white to it, and maybe even a touch or two of blue, and you've got a very nice beige. So learn to mix your colors. You can make almost anything out of the colors that are on your board. If you're out of something, you won't freak out. You'll be okay. You'll be able to mix whatever you need Sometimes you might have to make it a little different than what you actually see, and that's okay too. Putting some little wheels on, because my planter has little wheels on it. These planters are really cool. You feed them from the top and the water drizzles through, in this case, five layers all the way down to the bottom, and it has a little hose on the bottom that releases the excess water. You can plug that if you want to keep the water in it, but uh, the system is really cool because all the plants get watered and you only have to water one time from the top. Shaping the planter a little bit here. It's slowly shaping up and getting the different levels on it. Adding more plants and vines. Really trying not to put explicit detail but implied detail. Trying to remember that the plants on the right side have a darker tone than the plants on the right side, or the left side, rather. For you, it's your left side, and they're the lighter ones, and your right side are the darker ones. So I'm actually using different color blues in some circumstances, or adding a little bit of the darker rose matter deep into my greens to try to make them a little less bright took out a very fine tip to put in a few of those lighter vines. I could have done the shadows on the ground. I could have done that watering pail. It's very hard to edit yourself and say, that's enough. Just go with what you were thinking of doing. Don't go crazy. There are dozens of shades of green here, which shows that there are dozens of varieties of leaves here and herbs here. 
In some instances, it's easier to paint big because some of the details are so much easier to put in. Putting in itsy bitsy vines are not always easy. Or differentiating, for instance, some of these leaves are white on the outside and I really would have liked to have shown that, but it would have been ridiculous to put that kind of detail in a little painting. So time to work on that background again. We had it in basically how just a scratched in background and now I'm going in with a little more vibrant color. Could have left it like that. There was nothing wrong with it. So remember when you make your little sky holes in the middle there, be careful that they are not too light or bright or they will look like a polka dot, but there will be some of the sky shining through. in a little bit of that darker dirt that's in there then a few of my lighter whiter leaves and then I will put a little glaze on it so it's all finished now no I didn't put the fence in or all of the lights on the porch itself but I just kind of gave it a little bit of a shadow to set it down I hope I've established the dark side and the light side and the fact that there's a variety of leaves without putting in too much detail. Just making leaves that really don't have a lot of definition if you look at them. But when you step back, you know you're looking at a planter. I enjoyed doing it and I'm calling it on plein air because I was sitting outside on my hot porch painting it. And I loved every minute of it. See you next time. <laughs>